Do you, do you swear that the testimony you're about to give before Dr. this Dr. Christine Ford had walked into the most intimidating the arena of her life, so a Senate hearing Thank you very that has both gripped and divided this nation. Give your statement. She sat before the 21 senators to relive her worst nightmare, an attempted rape that she says was perpetrated by Brett Kavanaugh, the judge who Republicans are wanting to elevate to the highest court in the land. I am here today not because I want to be, I am terrified. The incident was 36 years ago, two high school students at a party. But the account today was vivid, credible, devastating. I was pushed onto the bed and Brett got on top of me. He began running his hands over my body and grinding into me. I yelled, hoping that someone downstairs might hear me. And I tried to get away from him, but his weight was heavy. Brett groped me and tried to take off my clothes. I believed he was going to rape me. I tried to yell for help. When I did, Brett put his hand over my mouth to stop me from yelling. This is what terrified me the most and has had the most lasting impact on my life. It was hard for me to breathe, and I thought that Brett was accidentally going to kill me. Few are doubting that she was the victim of an assault but might Dr. Ford be misremembering the assailant? So what you are telling us is this could not be a case of mistaken identity? Absolutely not. Dr. Ford, with what degree of certainty do you believe Brett Kavanaugh assaulted you? 100%. 100%. And she was asked what, as a trauma survivor, most haunted her all these years later. The laughter. The, la the uproarious laughter between the two and their having fun at my expense. Republicans watched in complete silence laughter. while Democrats said America owes Dr. Ford a debt of gratitude. There are millions of victims and survivors out there who have been inspired by your courage. I am. Bravery is contagious. We Outside, they were chanting her name. The research psychologist from California has become a symbol for all those who have survived violence and abuse. While that searing testimony was playing out in a congressional hearing room, activists have gathered here outside the Supreme Court, regarding this as the most important cultural moment for a generation. If you do not move, you will be placed under arrest. A short time later, the arrests began police clearing the roads as the political temperature here continues to rise. Then stepped forward Judge Kavanaugh. He was not so much angry as furious, vociferous in denying what Dr. Ford had alleged. I'm not questioning that Dr. Ford may have been sexually assaulted by some person in some place at some time, but I have never done this to her or to anyone. That's not who I am. It is not who I was. I am innocent of this charge. This has destroyed my family and my good name, a good name built up through decades of very hard work and public service at the highest levels of the American government. As I told the Supreme you, Court nominee was, was utterly was withering about this experience, his family weeping behind him. This confirmation process has become a national disgrace. The Constitution gives the Senate an important role in the confirmation process. But you have replaced advice and consent with search and destroy. He then attacked Senate Democrats, saying they would not succeed in hounding him out. I will not be intimidated into withdrawing from this process. You've tried hard. You've given it your all. No one can question your effort. But your coordinated and well-funded effort to destroy my good name and destroy my family will not drive me out. In the surrounding halls, protesters made their views known. The anguish of survivors of sexual assault colliding head-on with those who see the presumption of innocence as the key principle at stake. Senators and indeed all Americans must now make a judgment. I am innocent of this charge. 
Brett's assault on me dra drastically altered my life. Who is telling the truth? The accuser or the accused?